Cory Gardner has been a U.S. Senator a little over two years. His constituents have not seen much of him in that time. Senator Gardner has not done a town hall with his constituents in 486 days, 7 hours and 20 minutes. Not that they're counting or anything. That is being mocked by some Coloradans who are holding their own meetings with a cardboard cutout of the senator. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I have to get into a mode of like saying things. Before the 2016 election, I, I was like a lot of people. You know, I paid attention to the news. I voted. I cared about stuff. But I was busy with a job and kids. I knew that there were things that were not fair about the country. I just, I was on the sidelines. Then Trump happened. We're going to win so much that the people of Colorado are going to be sick you of You call winning. women you don't like fat pigs? Dogs. You called Mexicans a lot of rapists? Oh, I don't know what I said. Oh, I don't remember. Do from or get every time. So the AP now projecting Donald Trump has won. A complete earthquake just came just, out of nowhere. what the f This morning oh you God. finally woke up from a coma. Well, you might want to go back. President of the United States. Watching that unfold it was immensely shocking. And it just got worse from there. I had in my mind this voice just saying, oh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? As just little old me in Colorado. I, I felt helpless to do anything about the President of the United States. But Trump is not doing this alone. There are lots of people enabling him, protecting him, voting with him. So one morning, I was a bit angry and frustrated, and I just started researching Trump's backers. And I came across this guy, Cory Gardner. And I'm like, hey, that's my senator. Colorado did not vote for Trump. His agenda is not popular here. But on this list of all the senators in the country, the one who was the most out of step with his home state, voting with Trump almost all the time, was Cory Gardner. Gardner was a Republican who squeaked into office by running as a moderate. So what's a Republican, like me, doing at a wind farm? He talked about all these cute things like bipartisanship, country over party. When my party is wrong, I'll say it. He called Some himself a different kind of Republican. Who says Republicans don't believe in science? He was reaching out. So with Cory Gardner, he apruebo este mensaje. He was kind of pro-choice or whatever. I believe the pill ought to be available over the counter. He just seemed like a, a nice, fun-loving guy. Or at least he was trying really, really hard to seem like it. But behind that chubby, cheeky smile is another story altogether. You see, the thing that Cory Gardner really seems to care about is raising money from special interests. In an exclusive seaside resort, Gardner appeared to offer special interests lots of face time. From big pharma, from oil and gas companies. And this guy is one of the biggest recipients of cash from the gun lobby. The NRA gave his campaign more than $3 million. Saying, school shooter, school shooter. As parents, we have to sit with the idea that our kids are doing active shooter drills. Gardner is doing nothing because they're paying him to do nothing. The NRA is proud to support Cory Gardner. For Meanwhile, Gardner had become a key ally of Trump and his agenda. And he's been so great. Cory Gardner, please come on up, please. Gutting environmental regulations, giving tax cuts to billionaires, appointing anti-abortion judges, and repealing the Affordable Care Act, which would kick 600,000 Coloradans off their health insurance. Most at risk, the disabled, seniors, and children. Gardner was running point on the whole thing. Cory Gardner has been with us a hundred percent. There was no waiver. What the heck happened to bipartisanship, Cory? We will fight against the socialist tides across this country and the Democrats are trying. All right, so American Citizenship 101. If your senator is completely out of step with what you believe, you call them. And I must have called that office 2,000 times. Hi, this is and I would just get his machine, but that's it. You never hear anything back, he never responds. So then I learned that the Senate was going into recess, and I thought, great, he'll come back to Colorado and hold a town hall like senators do. But no, 
no town hall. For a whole year, no town hall. Senator Cory Gardner has been a tough man to track down these days. Gardner has not held any in-person town halls this year. During this week of recess, why aren't you hosting a town hall? When's, When's your, your town hall? Well, <laughs> right, yeah. we'll be scheduling. I haven't seen the schedule, but what's your question? I'd love to answer your question. When's your town hall? We've gone to your How website, we've we'll called your office, office, and we're trying to get on your list. And it seemed like he didn't want to face his constituents. So a group of us started organizing. We created a Facebook page. For many in our country, the past year was a wake-up call, and they do not intend to sleep on democracy again. We protested. Why do we work? Jeff and tried catching him on the move. It's perplexing to me, especially because you're running for re-election in a state that roundly rejected Trump. And the movement to track down Cory Gardner started to grow. And as healthcare repeal was building momentum in Congress, a group of people with disabilities occupied his offices for days. We tried to get his attention any way we could. And after everything, he just went on television and called us paid protesters. Uh, and so that clearly was a paid effort. None of us are getting paid for this. I'm a librarian. Senator Gardner had broken so many promises. He was pushing through policies against our interests, and nobody could talk to him or meet with him or have any idea whether he was even listening. Something had to give. There is Gordon! There is Gordon! So we had this idea. There are plenty of chairs on the right. We'll hold our own town hall with this cardboard cutout of the senator, and people can ask him questions. 1,600 people showed up. And we were like, whoa. Welcome, everyone. My name is Katie, and I am part of a local indivisible group. And you can see by my shoes, I'm a librarian. <laughs> so, Senator Gardner did not respond to our formal invite. We called, we wrote letters, we filled out the online forms, we went to his office, and we are here tonight because he is not here. So our objective is simple. We are here to be heard, we're here to be seen. Senator, I'm gonna let them know tonight. It's good to see you. I, I call you every single day. Well, thank you so much for not coming tonight. When President Trump issued an unconstitutional immigration order, you remain silent. My name is Fabula, and my community is afraid right now. There's divisiveness going around, hateful rhetoric, people being told that they don't belong here. Without the ACA, I can't access the care that has saved my life. And people clearly wanted a chance to talk to him and have their voices heard. I would like you to guarantee that our Social Security and Medicare will be there for my children. Where is your line? I am not I think there was something cathartic about it, even if it was just symbolic. I want you guys to take out your Colorado driver's licenses. All right. Do your job. Hi, Senator Gardner. My name is Katie Barnett. I'm here with your Denver Town Hall. But I have one question to ask you now, which is, can you hear us? Don't give up. That's when this all began. Right now, protesters are getting creative to try and get Colorado Senator Cory Gardner's attention. Since they can't talk to Gardner in person, they're using a cardboard cutout. Follow me. Yes, that's exactly right. You know who this is? Looks familiar, doesn't it? That's, that's your senator. Yeah, he is a Republican. Ah. Cardboard Cory, they call him. He's been in three different Colorado cities just today. This is Cory Gardner's alter ego, which is good and shows oh, up to things. So that's nice. I like so we've been taking him to all four corners of the state here. to hear from Coloradans from all walks of life. 
Hi, Corey. H Hello, Corey. Good to see you. Oh, I'm too tall, aren't I? Hello, Senator Gardner. Corey. I made so many phone calls to you, Corey. It's good that you came to Montrose. I appreciate your making time. And it turns out, Coloradans have a lot of questions. Senator Gardner, where are you? Seriously, dude. Where, where have you been, brother? Do you even like Colorado? We haven't seen you in a really long time. Hey, Corey Gardner, my question to you all is if you will actually stand up uh, against the Trump administration. They had really big things they wanted to talk about. You say you believe in science, but then you vote time after time against the climate crisis. And really specific things. I've got a question for you about the Renewable Electricity Standard Act. And a lot of folks just wanted the chance to tell their stories. I've been fighting for democracy my entire life. About how his policies are affecting their lives. He's a leading supporter of the push to repeal Obamacare. I'm a stage four cancer survivor, and you voted to take away my health care seven times. Tonight, terror in that STEM school outside Denver. My son is a student at STEM Academy. The shooting has caused an immense amount of PTSD. When are you going to start caring about this instead of the NRA? Tell me. Do you actually support abortion rights or do you not? I do want to know, why are you so concerned with my uterus? Children don't belong in cages. They belong with their mommies and daddies. When are you going to support comprehensive and humane immigration reform? I would like to know what you are doing for gay pride. What do you have to say about What's that? What's that, Corey? I don't hear you. Does it have an answer? Children living in poverty and about vaccination. Exactly. That you lost your mom. What is the life of my 10-year-old granddaughter? I'd like to know if you're smiling at your child. Where are you? I want to ask you, is the pressure at all getting to you? You have a lot of power. Years from now, we're going to be reading about this in history books, and you want to be the voice that says, I stood up to this, I did something about it. You don't want your grandchildren to ask you, when you were in power, what did you do to stop this? What did you do to change this? And for your answer to be nothing. You know, it's just a basic ideal of representative democracy. Elected officials can't represent people they don't talk to. Even if you don't agree with them, it's still the minimum you owe your constituents. Just show up. Be there. You know, people deserve to have their voices heard. Cory Gardner does not represent Colorado because he represents special interests, money first, people last. Cory Gardner is failing at that very basic function of an elected official. Well, thanks for showing up and being our uh taking the time to be our senator. But you know, people kind of like the cardboard version of Cory Gardner. I'm glad you came out here, Cory. This is a good first step. I mean, he shows up. He doesn't lie. You are not representing the people here. Goodbye, good riddance, jackass. OK, well, not everybody likes him. This year, Armed with a boatload of special interest cash, Gardner is up for re-election. With President Donald Trump and a Republican majority in the United States Senate. This is the race that Colorado will be watching. This race uh, could determine control of the U.S. Senate. Let's win in November! Thanks. He still refuses to hold Trump accountable for anything. Do you believe it's appropriate for the President of the United States to ask a foreign leader to investigate a political rival? Yes or no? Well, look, this is what we're going to get into. The Senate Intelligence Committee is having an investigation, a bipartisan but is investigation. It, but, is it, but is it appropriate? Joe, I've answered your question. But the question is, is, is it appropriate for a president look, to be Look, I think we are going to have an investigation. To it's ask a, a foreign it's a government to investigate. investigation. But, Senator, it's a yes or no question. Investigation. And he and the president even used a deadly pandemic to play politics. Trump's process of providing ventilators appears to be based on political favors. Corey Gardner, who's been lockstep with the president, is being rewarded for that loyalty. He's got my complete and total support and endorsement. No matter what happens in 2020, this has been an amazing experience for our little team. We have a bond now that is so strong because the stakes feel so high. This guy <laughs> changed my life. <laughs> we are family. We are chosen family. And we get stuff done together, we celebrate, and then we keep moving. Being quietly disgusted, feeling powerless, everyone feels like that sometimes. But at least for me, it's motivation. And I'm not alone. That is how we are going to make real change. When right. community voice and community people are at the table to speak for ourselves. We know real change happens from the grassroots bottom up, right? It's about organizing, 
protesting, making calls, knocking doors, and getting out the vote. Fighting with Trump being fighting with hate and racism. And putting people in the center that are directly affected. It's time for us to take action. By Trump, by Gardner. You shouldn't take a Twitter hashtag for you to show up for black people. And building a community around that, inspiring others to join us. Let him hear your message. Let's get it to him. As for Cardboard Corey, you know, we hope to be retiring him along with the senator in November. But we're gonna miss you, buddy. It's okay, we'll find him a good home. <laughs>